And what's up everybody, I'm back with another stadium review, more so a racetrack review. Today, we are reviewing the Owasso Speedway, located in, not Owasso, Michigan, Ovid, Michigan, not COVID, Ovid. Closer to the center of the state. Well, yeah, more north. Yeah, north, north, north central kind of thing. This is another, I believe, a quarter mile track. It's a paved track. Me and Ann Pomeroy were able to visit back on July 13th, I believe it was, for some night racing action, uh, which included a lot of fun stuff. And I got a lot to talk about with this track. So let's jump right into it, shall we? I got to say, this track is very, for a short track, a local short track, it's very high end here. Um, Compared to other tracks. That's not saying other tracks are, you know, need to be high-end. A lot of them work, but this one took it to the next step. And that's because a lot of their sponsors, they have a lot of sponsors, but you'll, you'll notice when you're there, there's a lot of cool, a lot of bigger sponsors sponsor this track, probably for that reason, it's because they take it to that next level. Um, but there's a really cool sign out front. It's got nice decorations, and it's, it's lighted, and it's very, very up-to-date, which is cool. Um, oh, by the road, there's lots of staff, and and a lot, a lot. Of, I've never met a, I've never been to a understaffed track. This is not about the amount of staff, and those staff do a fine job. But with a higher end track, you're going to need higher end staff, and that's what they have here. They wear more official uniforms. They have higher levels of security, bag checks, and stuff, which I only really have seen at the really big tracks like Michigan and Bristol. But here they got it too. Um, and there was also tailgating out front, which I've never seen for a quarter mile track race before. But that was really cool to see too. People tailgating out front, playing football, grilling, drinking, all that kind of stuff. That was a extra additive to the environment. So that was really cool. Also, I want to point out the fact that this track has two separate price points. If you are 21 or over, it is $14, which is not bad for what you're getting here. That's a good price that's on par with other tracks. You know, it's about what other tracks charge. It's usually between about 10 to 15 bucks for most of them. So 14 is right in the middle of that range, which is good. And also the fact that 20 and under are free which, you know, a lot of tracks do like kid discounts where they like really cheap tickets or they're even free, but 20, it's pretty high. Uh, I would say for an age to go on, but they have good checks and measure to make sure people don't abuse that system, which is good. Um, so I, I do like that. So um, now what about stuff inside the track? There's a lot of stuff to do in this track. I gotta tell you, they have a really nice souvenir stand that we didn't buy anything because there's nothing too interesting. But they have nice shaded cover areas underneath the grandstands where you can sit. Um, and then when you get to the stands, there's a good amount of seating at this track. Um, it doesn't go super high up, but it goes almost completely. It goes around, I think I would say, three-fourths of the track, maybe. It goes all the way around turn three. It even goes partway into turn one. And that's a lot of seating um, for a quarter mile track which is kind of what i want for corgan oil speedway to do is is kind of you know it kind of expand that thing if i if i bought it and i wanted to expand it that's kind of what i would look at to do which is really really cool so you know there's a lot of different more of the story there is there's a lot of different places that you can sit from multiple different viewpoints which is cool they also do a really good job at enforcing the family section um they say no drugs no alcohol they catch somebody drinking or smoking, they catch them. Well, not so much the smoking. I saw people smoking cigarettes in there, and then especially right next to the employees, and they didn't do anything about it. But they didn't say specifically no smoking. So why would they enforce it if it's not a rule? You know, so I, I could see that. But no, they did a really good job enforcing stuff otherwise, and it made for a really good experience. You know, it makes it a good track for all ages. You want to get there and get hammered. A spot for you there if you want to just go with your family there's another spot there's another spot for you there too it loves everybody to come enjoy the racing which is really really cool um then the track itself um a lot of different things about it first off there's it's a paved infield there's no grass in, in the track at all no dirt nothing like that it's, it's paved on the in, infield as well 
which I thought was interesting because they do have like a figure eight course down there, uh, which Corgan Oil also has an infield, uh, has an, uh, not all paved infield. They have a figure eight course. So I'm very interested how that works. We didn't get to see a figure eight race when we went, but it'd be cool to see how that would work. Um, I thought it was very, very interesting. I've never seen anything like that before. So I, I that was cool. It's also banked. The track is also banked completely all the way around. It's about the same banking. Uh, the turns are a little higher banked than the um, straightaways, but not by much. I thought the straightaways were very highly banked for a short track. Um, you know, usually they're not that highly banked, if banked at all. Um, you see that on a lot of tracks across the entire country. But here, they really are banked. And it does it does really, really add to the racing. Um, there's there's a point as they go into turn two where there's like a big bump and you see cars like kind of bounce around and maybe get out of groove or whatever. And then also the very, very top line on the track. It's very hard to see when you're there, but if you look at an overhead shot, you can see it. Um, or if you're watching the racing, you can tell as well. There's a tiny little line up near the wall on the straightaways where it's not banked at all. And so cars can run up there and completely flat. And I think a lot of cars did use that to try and get some extra speed and get some better entry into the corner, um, which I thought was very, very interesting. Um, a lot of times it looks like cars were going to get very close to hitting the wall, though. How close they were, I couldn't really tell, but um, since I was in turn two and there's not a lot of seating in turn two, which is fine. That's where all their billboards are and everything, so that would make sense, but that was cool. Um, but yeah, the racing was good. Um, it wasn't like a super demolition derby type X. The racing was pretty clean for the most part outside of when somebody lost a tire and another car ran over it and got airborne. That was probably the biggest wreck of the night. Um, there were a few other spins and a couple other smaller wrecks and stuff like that, but nothing too, too crazy. Uh, otherwise, so that was, and so the racing though was still very exciting. It was a lot of fun to watch. And I, I like watching crashes, but I can also appreciate good racing too. So it wasn't too too much of a, a it was it was a lot of fun to watch it happen still. Um, and then the banking definitely helps with that. You can carry a lot more speed, corners and stuff like that. I didn't think the cars were that much faster, but there is a little bit of a noticeable difference, especially with like getting into the corner and everything like that. Um, and then one of their big gimmicks, like they didn't have a lot of. I would say true, like things that they do in between the races is kind of just another one of those tracks where they just, you get there, you do the races, and you go home. Pretty straight to the point, and I can respect that. They did have like a, a raffles and a couple other things, smaller things, but their big thing was their hot dog race. We had no clue that this was going to happen until they announced that it was happening. We're like, what? Okay. Uh, so the premise for this hot dog race, sorry, the premise for this hot dog race is, um, some guys go to the start, they, they park at the start finish line and they all go and they have to eat a hot dog. Every time they come around to the start finish line after completing a lap, they have to eat a hot dog and then they can go do another lap. First person, I think to do it three or four times wins. I don't remember. Um, trust me, it, it, it's something to watch, tell you what, especially when one of the competitors runs over the uh, hot dog supply, the box of hot dogs, and then it shreds all over the back stretch. Um, you'll see that you can see that in the vlog we did. Um, it was a it was a really really funny. Um, I like the idea. It's a really fun gimmick. Everybody really loved it, so it was, it was cool. Um, and that's definitely something I think other tracks should. Um, Take note, not obviously not doing the same very same thing, but something similar. I think just to add a little bit more fun gimmicks on their regular racing nights, you know. But the racing game, like I said, was fun overall. I had a, we had a really good time. Um, it's a really cool track to go to, you know. Like with I ninety six Speedway, it is out in the middle of a farmland area, but you can't really tell that because there's more developed and stuff but you can definitely tell there's still farm stuff obviously but i don't know i liked it um very very high end and it, out of all the tracks that i've been to like these quarter mile tracks around the state we haven't been to many we got one more on the docket for august it's coming up in a few weeks we might go to that we might not i might be doing another one in september we don't quite know 
We might be doing another one in October, but that's all that's all tentative. So out of all the tracks that I've been to so far, I would say this one has the best chance of getting a, a NASCAR or like one of their divisions racing there. ARCA, maybe even a truck series race if they can um, you know, figure out the parking and um make sure all the facilities are ready to go, which I think outside of a few minor upgrades, maybe improving some of the seating and stuff, I think they are pretty much ready for that. Um, it's just about whether NASCAR would want to go there, which you can't really do much about that, at, at least in a quick manner. So anyway, for my final score for the Owasso Speedway, I will have to give this one a good... I'll have to give this one a good, I'll give it a, mm, I'll give it an eight. I'll give it an eight. Um, it was really fun. Um, and if you're in the area and you're a big short track racing fan, I definitely recommend going here. It's a lot of fun. Um, I'm sure it's, it looks a lot of fun to drive as well, but obviously I don't drive. Well, I do drive, but I don't race cars. That's, that's kind of my point. Anyway, that's going to do it though for this review. If you've ever been to the Owasso Speedway, I'd love to know your thoughts about it in the comment section down below. And that's going to do it for this video as well. So stay tuned for much more amazing content, including more racetrack reviews, other stadium reviews, and much more amazing content. Until next time, see you guys later. Goodbye.